In the late 18th century, the East India Company had already established a footprint in India. They were strategically and cunningly expanding their presence in India. Around that time, India was a collection of many kingdoms controlled by their rulers. One such king, Chela Muthu and Queen Sakandi Muthulala of the Ramand Kingdom gave birth to their only child, Velu Nachia. She was born on 3rd of January 1730 in Ramantha Pura. Being an only child, she was given best education. She was a scholar in several languages and extremely proficient in French, English and Urdu. Velu Najiar was also trained in combat. She learned to use several weapons, archery, horse riding and various martial arts like Vallari and Slamma. She was just 16 when she was married to King Muttu of the Shiva Gangai estate. Together, the couple had a daughter. In 1772, the son of the Nawab of Agad joined hands with the East India Company and invaded Shiva Gangai. A battle ensued and King Muttu was killed by Colonel Smith. Velu Nachiar and her daughter were drawn into conflict. However, she managed to barely escape. She took refuge in Virupachi near Dindigul for eight years under the protection of Kopala. There, she planned her revenge by building a powerful army. She had the support from Gopala but needed more help. So, she went to meet Hyder Ali, the Nizam of the Kingdom of Mysore. She met him in Dindigul where she impressed him with her Urdu. Moreover, the Nizam took note of her courage and agreed to help her. He allowed her to stay at the Dindigul fort. There she was treated like a royal queen. She was also provided with a monthly amount of 400 gold coins. To strengthen her army, she was given 5,000 infantry and 5,000 cavalry. The Nizam even provided her the necessary weapons to fight the British. In 1780, she faced the British, making her the first queen in India to fight a freedom struggle against them. She has found about an armory of the British, her plan revolved around it. She planned a suicide bombing attack on the armory. Queeli, another female warrior in her army, accepted the queen's order with honor and carried out the mission. She drenched herself in ghee, lit herself on the fire and charged towards the armory, thus effectively blowing up with the smith rails. Now emerging victorious, Velu Najiar managed to inherit her husband's kingdom again which she ruled for a decade. After the restoration of her kingdom, Velu Najiar expressed her gratitude to Nijam Hadrali by constructing a mosque and church at Saragani. She maintained good relations with him and his son Tipu Sultan. In 1780, she took help of the Maradu brothers with the administration of the kingdom. Later in 1790, her daughter Vilachi inherited the throne. Velu Nachiar passed away a few years later on 25th of December 1796. The Tamils called her Virangai or Brave Woman. To honor her memory, the government released a commemorative posted stamp in her name. Throughout the years, there were several dance ballet performances and theatrical plays on Velu Nachiar. In 2014, the Viramangai Velu Nachiar Memorial in Shiva Gangai was inaugurated along with a six-foot bronze statue of the Queen. Alpha AS on this occasion of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahasav remembers India's unsung heroes, the brave women of our freedom struggle. Jai Hind.